We are joined now by the college football insider for Dave Campbell's Texas football, Mr. Shahan Jairaja. Shahan, happy holidays. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, oh no. Do you want to try? Sorry. Sorry. That's my now bad. Try That's it. my bad. That's <laughs> my bad. Thank you for real. Yes. Um, <laughs> welcome in. We were not. You, I know you were going to come into the office today and work. You didn't know we were doing a show. And this was all before yesterday. Yes. Uh, but we're happy to have you here because we need to talk about. Um, what happened down in Houston in the in the third ward this uh, on, on yes, yesterday? We've been hearing rumblings about it for a bit, but uh, we have another FBS coaching change. And while I think we could have seen maybe the other two coming, this one feels like it's a little bit out of left field. Major Applewhite is out at Houston after just two seasons. Um, I'm I'm inter- I'm pretty surprised. I'm interested. I, I'm I'm wondering. Are you surprised? I am surprised, I think. Uh, you know, it's a lot of the reasons why this hire failed, I feel like you could have told when the hire happened. Mm. You know, I mean, it, he was brought in to try to continue the Tom Herman era at Houston, and the reality is Major Applewhite in so many ways is not Tom Herman. It, you know, he's not the offensive mind that Tom Herman was. Even when uh, Herman and Applewhite were there together, I mean, this was Tom Herman's offense, just like it is at Texas. You know, people want to blame other people for the offense. Mm-hmm. It's Tom Herman. Uh, you know, and he wasn't even the star on the coaching staff. I think that was Todd Orlando. I, I think that if you wanted to get the better X's and O's coach, you should have gotten Todd Orlando. Um, and he's just not a super exciting guy. I mean, whatever you want to say about him, I, I mean, he's a really good guy. I mean, I've had very positive interactions with him, but he's not necessarily this guy who's coming in and owning a room or owning a program necessarily. He's not this expert in branding that Tom Herman was, who was able to turn Houston in a lot of ways into what the program believes it is at this point and what I think it deservedly in mm-hmm. some ways thinks it is. Um, it was always an underwhelming hire, and now I think the results were probably even a little bit worse than most of us expected uh, at Houston the last two years, and not all of them were his fault. Uh, again, though, when I look at this firing, it's to me, it's a, it's the administration, whether they believe it or not, saying, we messed up. This was a not the right hire. This was not the right time. This was a bad decision. Um, and now I'm real curious to see what they decide to do to remedy it. Yeah, it's, it, it is. You know, I, I, I mentioned it on Twitter, but this is the first time since 1998 we've had a team in the state of Texas, an FBS team, fire a coach after less than at less than 2.01 seasons, yeah. right? We've had coaches who have been fired like three games into their third year, yeah. but this is the earliest a coach has been fired since 1998 when Dave Roberts got fired at Baylor after yeah. just two years. And that was, there were some there were some things there. He had mouthed off to the media about how this was like the worst team he'd ever seen <laughs> and stuff like that. There were some there were some mitigating circumstances yeah. there. Um, brought on a very fun uh, guy, Morris there. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what's, what's interesting to me is I think people are, go- people look at the record. He's 15 and 11. Yeah. And you know they go eight and five this year. Um, they go eight and five. Look, they, obviously when you have a, a, one of the best players in, in program history in, in Ed Oliver, you want to do better than that. They got drilled by Army in the Armed Forces Bowl. That was without arguably their two best players in Derek King and Ed Oliver. Um, I don't put a ton of stock in that, but you know I tweeted that I was like, man, you know the record is it, you don't see guys with that record get fired. Um, a lot of Houston fans were clapping back and saying, "Lo, you got to look deeper." And and there was uh, an under, you know, the 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 undercurrent was he was beating a lot of bad teams, and from you know, there there were talk that they were saying students were apathetic. There was you know people there was not this excitement around the program. Um, I I don't know. I I I wonder. You know, when we when the history of of Major Applewhite's time at Houston is going to be is going to be written, I feel like it's going to be a mixed bag. That yeah, he had two winning seasons, but it seems like for Houston fans, that's missing the point. Yeah, I I mean, I think that you actually put it kind of perfectly. Uh, Actually, I want to point out a tweet from Joseph Duarte, the Houston Mm -hmm. Chronicle beat writer. Uh, He tweeted this after the bowl game. As I mentioned in today's bowl advance, there's absolutely no buzz around the Houston football program. Since climbing to number six early in the 2016 season, the Cougars are 19-13 and with two lower-tier bowl losses. And I think in a lot of ways, that's what you look at. Mm -hmm. There's not any buzz around Houston. Houston fancies itself, and again, as I mentioned, deservedly so, on par with a Boise State, on Mm -hmm. par with a UCF as one of these best programs outside of the group of five. And there's every reason to believe that they can and should be one of those programs. And right now, they're just not. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, whatever you want to say, I mean, 
obviously they lose some of their best players, uh, you know, to, to injury during the year at Oliver Derek King, you mentioned, um, and they were starting a true freshman in the bowl game, but to absolutely lay down in the mm-hmm. state of Texas. And, and we know how big army fans we are at Dave Campbell's Texas football, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, 70 to 14 yeah to, to any team it's a bad it's a bad look yeah yeah and and i mean i don't think that going into that game you would say wow army is just overwhelmingly just dominant against mm-hmm. houston right you, they're better i mean i don't think it's a shock that they won but but this, to absolutely just run them out of the building in the state of texas too and the other thing i want to say that i think you have to point to you know they fired the defensive coordinator mark d'onofrio mm-hmm. kendall bryles ends up leaving for florida state mm-hmm. So you're in a situation now where your two coordinators are gone. Kendall Bryles, obviously a guy that Houston has a lot of optimism about. And if you look at the success this season, it was almost all on the back of Kendall Bryles coaching, in my opinion. Um, so you're going in now. You don't have either of your coordinators. You know, you don't have a lot of position coaches. You've almost cleared the deck on your own just by mm-hmm. making these firings. So you're in a position now where Major Applewhite's the only guy that you're b- building your program around. You don't have any of these other talented coaches that you relied on earlier in the year. Um, you know, I think I think in that way too, in some ways, that made the decision a little bit easier. That there's nothing in terms of continuity that you're losing because you already don't have any coordinators. Um, it's Shahan J. Raja, our college football insider here on Texas Football. That did get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. And I think you're right. I think that overall, I think when the initial shock of firing a coach after just two years wear, wears off, you can kind of see it and you go, okay, you don't have to agree with it. I think that there's, I think there, there's a, a split among people as far as whether or not they agree with it. And I think there's a reasonable argument on both sides. But I do think that that it's not as clear cut as saying, look at his record. He only got two years. Um, I think that there, there were underlying symptoms of a problem there. My question is, and, and, I, and I tweeted this yesterday, and I don't mind saying it again, but it's like, all right, what changed? Like, like Major Applewhite, I think, was about what we thought he was going to be at Houston. Like, why now? Why? What changed over the course of this? And I think that kind of leads us into our other question or our other conversation, which is where they go from here. So there's a lot of smoke around Dana Holgerson from West Virginia. Yeah. A lot of smoke. And he's got um, he's got uh, history at Houston. He's been there before. Um, he's tight with, with one of the big money guys there. Um, it's apparently like a, a match made in heaven. This makes a lot more sense, a lot more sense, if – Sometime this week, they're announcing Dana Holgerson as the head coach because that would mean they were they, they were going a bit kind of like what Jimbo Fisher did at A and M, which was kind of uh, back channel talking about getting him to, getting him there. We just got to clear out the room, you know, clear out the sp- the office basically for him to to occupy. I think if if Dana Holgerson is in fact the new head coach at Houston, this makes a lot more sense. If he's not and he's leveraging you a he's leveraging Houston to get more money out of West Virginia, then I wonder what the plan B is. I think that right now is a real critical moment for Houston. Yeah, and and I do want to mention a little bit just with Dana Holgerson. You know, there's this thought process of why would a Power 5 coach leave for a group of five job? Mm-hmm. And, and I do want to say there are reasons. Mm-hmm. You, you know, at West Virginia, Dana Holgerson hasn't gotten the level of support that he believes he deserves, and I probably think he deserves to a certain extent too. Uh, for having pretty sustained success there, make you know, winning seven, eight games every year, winning ten games once, um, you know, having a pretty consistent product on the field in a conference where you have some disadvantages. I would say the th- I would say the third best team in the conference yeah. in his tenure. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You know, because I mean, Oklahoma and TCU probably, and, and you know, maybe Oklahoma State. You kind of put yeah. in that so tied for third. three, four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, they've consistently been a top half team. Which I mean, if you look at resources, I don't think West Virginia clearly stands out as a top half team mm-hmm. uh, in that conference. I agree, and um. You know, and I think that he believes that he hasn't been respected there necessarily the way that he feels like he deserves to have been. Uh, Money-wise, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think it'll be just because Houston has deep pockets and West Virginia for a Power 5 team doesn't necessarily. Um, you know, and they, they haven't wanted to commit to him long-term at West Virginia. And so in some ways going to Houston would be a reset button. Mm-hmm. If they could just – he could go there. He could have some success because I do believe he would have success at Houston um, and then potentially be in line for another job potentially mm-hmm. now. Um, and uh, again, I think that ultimately at the end of the day, if you're Houston right now, again, you, you talk about not having any buzz around your program, mm-hmm. you know, on in this, uh, the city of Houston, there's not a whole ton of buzz, uh, you know, around the state, there's not a ton of buzz. I mean, 
hell, you know, I'll I'll speak for myself. You know, I only went to one Houston game this year. Yeah. You know, and uh, one or one or two. I can't remember. I think one. And you know, I Houston's one of these marquee programs mm-hmm. that I think should be spoken about at the group of five level like a UCF the the same sort of way you know they should be able to compete for statewide coverage with some of these power five schools and I don't think that's necessarily happened this year I mean you know fair or not from a national perspective the biggest thing that's happened at Houston in the last two years is the whole jacket incident yeah you, you know and and that was a whole yeah I, yeah know. for those who think that he got fired for the jacket no no incident, no, no I don't no, think no, he no. did it, it, it was a silly incident but that's kind of the point right that's the only time that mm-hmm. national people have talked about the University of Houston is the jacket incident and Ed Oliver being amazing nothing else really and mm-hmm. Derek King I think deserved more credit for what he did this year Great. but but at the same time again they went eight and four yep. uh, and eight and five at the end um okay so let's right now Dana Holgerson is the is the um the, uh, is the, the 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 name that's being bandied about? Um, let's let's operate in a world where we where he we find out that he was actually just leveraging Houston against or leveraging West Virginia against yeah. Houston to get more money out of West Virginia. I hope that's not the case. I'd love to see Dana Holgerson here, but um, but let's say that's the case. What's your plan B? If if it's yeah. not Dana Holgerson, who are you going after? Yeah, it, it's tough, you know, because I do think that they feel like they're in a spot right now where they have to make a splashy hire mm-hmm. and they have to dominate the headlines to a certain extent with that hire. Now, one guy who I've always felt like is interesting, and I don't know, one, whether he'd have interest in the job or two, whether Houston would have interest in him. But if they were going to hire a coordinator last time, I kind of feel like it shouldn't have been major. Mm-hmm. It should have been Todd Orlando. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Orlando's now been in the state for four years mm-hmm. now. Uh, he's recruited very, very well on the defense side of the ball. In fact, in some ways, I think their defensive back recruiting class last year at Texas might have been one of the best we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Caden Stearns, uh, you know, B.J. Foster, uh, Anthony Cook, guys mm-hmm. like that. Um, I think that they could do a lot worse than that. Now, the big thing, if you hire a Todd Orlando, I think you need to go find an offensive guy. You know, I mean, there's some talk that maybe – Maybe Sonny Cumbie's not totally happy. Maybe Doug Meacham's available. You know, there are guys out there that maybe can go and try to hire um, to to handle the offense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Orlando's earned a lot of respect in the state of Texas, I think, over the last couple of years, um, both at Houston and at Texas. He's I think he's one of the best defensive coordinators uh, in America, in my opinion, Uh, just with this level of offenses he has to defend consistently. I think he's done a pretty good job. Um, you know, but again, that's not necessarily a super splashy hire. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's I think a pretty solid. That's hire. a that's a that's a more by the book hire. Is right, kind of what it is. So I think that you know, again, this as I said before, I think this makes a lot more sense yeah. if they've already got a de facto verbal agreement Definitely. with with Dana Holgerson. But I worry if they don't. Okay, you're kind of you're kind of backtracking and going back to probably a hire you should have made two years ago. Right, and. And that's the question with Houston is Houston should be, you know, you look at the power five teams, they should be definitively next. Yes. There, there should be no other program in the state of Texas, in my opinion, I agree with that. that that should be ahead of them. And in a lot of ways, they should be on par with a Texas Tech mm-hmm. and, and maybe even rising up close to a Baylor TCU mm-hmm. and, and above. Um but right now, again, North Texas has taken that mantle from them. Mm-hmm. You know, North Texas is definitively the best group of five team in the states. And other programs, you know, there's been a couple that have struggled, but there are others that are also kind of on the up and up. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, not that Rice is necessarily going to compete with them, but Rice has made a hire to try to invest into the future. Uh, Texas State's just made a pretty young, exciting hire to try to invest into the future. Um, SMU, I think, you know, they've got a very good recruiting class mm-hmm. right now. We'll see whether Sonny Dykes can kind of pull it together. And, and even Texas Tech is is kind of pulling away, from, potentially mm-hmm. going to pull away from them now if Matt Wells works out. Mm-hmm. So they do need to make a good hire. I mean, this mm-hmm. is a very critical hire. Yeah. I think a big part of the reason why they even decided to make this was, you know, realignment is coming up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look, I, I'm not saying that making a good or bad hire is any guarantee that they end up any way. But if they, you know, if 2024 comes and this isn't a premier football program in the state of Texas, well, they're going to get left behind. He's Shahan J. Raja. Follow him on Twitter at Shahan J. Raja. It's spelled exactly like it sounds. Uh, <laughs> Shahan, wow. uh, happy new year. Happy and, new year. And uh, we'll see you next year. Cool. <laughs> Get it? Uh.